going to talk to you today a, a bit about Irish corporation tax policy, and I intend to cover three things. One is where did Irish corporation tax policy come from? Where is it at today, and how is it, how does, how is it perceived by business, and how is it perceived internationally? And then where might it be going, and what are the challenges in the future? I suppose to start off with where did it come from, well, I guess you have to go back to the late 1950s, as, as most of you know, which is when the current Irish corporation tax regime was really set. And what, what, was, the, what was the context at that time? Well, in the late 1950s, Ireland would have been one of the poorest countries in Europe. Um, I think Sean McBride used to say that the Irish uh, economy or the Irish country uh, was the only country in Europe that had been systema systematically colonized in the sense that you'd, you know, you'd had almost genocide of the population at times, you'd had mass appropriation of the wealth of the native population, etc. Uh, and you'd had a deliberate policy by the, by the colonial power to ensure that Ireland was not allowed to develop an industrial base. That was a deliberate policy directly leading to the famine. And I suppose you might say, well, it's a bit long ago to be talking about the famine, but I mean, just put that in context. In, in 1957, when we commenced um, our, our current uh, corporation tax policy, my grandfather would have been alive and he was born in 1880, and in, in his childhood, he, he would have spoken to and known survivors of the famine. So we're, that, that generation was only one degree of separation away from the famine. And the population decline that set in during the famine uh, was still continuing in the late 1950s. We'd had a population decline uh, since the famine right through uh, until the early 60s. And uh, Ireland had a population of, I think, between 8 and 10 million, d d depending on who you believe, uh, in the 1840s. Britain had a population of 19 million. By the time you got to, to, to the late 50s, the population of this state was 2.8 million or 4 million on the island, and the British population was 50 million. Uh, and as we know, there, there are 6.5 million people on this island, but almost 50 million people who, who claim to be Irish Americans. So the despoilation and, and the depopulation in, in, in the country had been massive and quite unprecedented in European terms. Um, you also had a country that had a, a disadvantage in being a peripheral location. I mean, we're geographically in the same position compared to Europe as the Aran Islands are to Ireland. Um, that's not a small disadvantage. Um, I think, as with uh, Commissioner Feehilly, I, I have the honour of having been born in the great city of Limerick. Uh, but, but we're both working in Dublin, and we know that, that, that large centres tend to attract investment. They attract people, they attract wealth. It's almost inexorable and I think peripheral locations have, have a, a distinct disadvantage. We're also a country that doesn't have a lot of natural resources. Um, natural resources within the EU are generally not shared. We don't share German steel or coal, or we don't share Norwegian oil. In fact, I think the only thing that is shared are, are, are fishing grounds, most of which are Irish. They seem to be the only natural resource that's shared within the EU. So our, Ireland starts, started in the, in the late 50s from a position of quite a lot of disadvantage. And I think when we talk about fairness in, in taxation policy and so on, that's important to remember. And I think that Irish corporation tax policy uh, was designed to, to redress some of the natural disadvantages that the country suffered from. And I think in that regard, it's been very successful. I think throughout that period, it's important to point out that unlike many other countries, the Irish corporation tax regime has been very, very transparent. It's been very open. It's not based on secret rulings. It's not based on special deals. If you want to know what the deal for taxation is in Ireland, you, you just open the tax legislation and that will tell you what it is. Uh, there have been a number of studies carried out. The Department of Finance did one, we did one at KPMG, and I see PwC did one recently, all of which confirmed that the effective rate of corporation tax in Ireland uh, is very similar to the nominal rate of 12.5%. And again, that's not the case in every other country. Um, so I, I, th I think we've operated in an open and transparent way. We've developed a system which is attractive to business. We've complied with EU law. Uh, and the system has been pretty successful, and that population that, that bottomed out at 2.8 million in around 1962 or 63 is up to around 4.6 million, I think now, 4.7 million. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence, by the way, that, that the economy and the population started to recover at a time when we started to be sensible about having a taxation regime that was attractive to business and attractive to bringing investment into the country. Uh, I think Irish policymakers have been clever throughout that period. Uh, we started off, as you know, with export sales relief, uh, when EU law meant that we had to change that, we brought in manufacturing relief. And when EU law meant to change that, we moved to having a general low rate of corporation tax, which was a very significant decision at the time. Um, there would have been a lot of concerns about extending a low rate of corporation tax to things like you know, supermarkets and domestic banks and so on. Uh, but a brave decision was taken, and, and I think the country benefited. Uh, I think policymakers have done an excellent job uh, throughout the recession in protecting that 12.5% tax rate because I think at various times, including during the bailout and so on, that tax rate would have been under pressure. 
and I think um, Irish policymakers can be proud of the fact that they've managed to retain that low rate of corporation tax in the face of quite a degree of pressure over the years. Um, and it's something which has, I think, enhanced Ireland's reputation internationally, that despite the pressure that the country was under, we managed to retain a regime that was attractive to business. In recent years, um, one of the threats that we would have identified maybe three or four years ago to, to Ireland's position uh, would have been the increasing competitive, competitiveness of the UK in particular. Uh, and we saw the UK, for example, introduced a patent box regime at, at, at a 10% rate of corporation tax. Um, and a number of other measures in the UK. And um, it's interesting to see that I think in the budget this year, I think Ireland responded very well to that. The announcement of the knowledge box, uh, which I think we can anticipate will be competitive with the UK regime, is very, very welcome. I think it should mean that Ireland will remain ahead of the UK in terms of its corporation tax offering. That's important because the UK is a fairly obvious alternative choice to Ireland. We, we speak the same language as geographically close and so on. Uh, the move to, re to remove the base year for R&D tax credits was also very important because, again, that redressed a, a potential competitive disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the UK. And some of the moves on the SARP, that's the, that's the special tax relief for assignees coming to Ireland, and in particular the removal of the cap on the relief is, again, very important because it, 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 it uh, gave us a position where we could undercut the UK competitively. If you had together those three measures combined, um, it's really very positive uh, in terms of inward investment for the country. Uh, KPMG UK do a survey of business asking them what country do they think is the most attractive for inward investment every year and uh, I think last year Ireland was sixth and the UK was first and those, the, the, the survey results are, are just out this week and those positions have been more or less reversed so Ireland is now in that survey back to the number one position which is, which is great to see. In terms of challenges going forward I just mentioned uh, maybe three or four things. One uh, is the obviously it's interesting news um, in the press this morning if it's true and I presume it is that um, there may be a 12.5% uh, corporation tax rate, or perhaps even lower, across the border in Northern Ireland in the near future. That will be an interesting challenge. You, you'll, you'll have a, um, a strong competitor for business uh, w with uh, the south of Ireland going forward. Um, I think the BEPS project, um, most of the BEPS project, I, I don't believe, is, is a danger to Ireland. Um, there's a lot of stuff in it which um, actually could be good for Ireland, because um, a lot of the project is, is, is designed to align um, the allocation of profits with, with where there is substance and uh, inward investment in Ireland tends to have substance and I don't think as a country we're particularly interested in attracting inward investment that doesn't have substance so that, that could be good for Ireland. Uh, one feature of it is that it's likely to align uh, the allocation of profits globally with where key decision makers are made and that will mean it'll be important to ensure that we continue to have a tax regime that makes it attractive for key decision makers to locate in Ireland and that's one area where we would say in the future further work might, might have to be done. I think the area that, uh, within BEPS that is the biggest threat to Ireland is the area of uh, the proposals on tax treaties. Uh, the proposals as currently framed in our view are pretty dangerous to small countries. In fact, I'd go so far as to say I think they're quite discriminatory against small countries that, that may not be deliberate. Um, and certainly we, we will be making submissions to the OECD and so on on the detail of that. I won't bore you with the detail here or, or, or I'd be here for a very long time. Um, and the final thing I'd say in terms of, of, of our policy going forward, we, we have done a very good job over many decades for foreign direct investment. Um, I think that our uh, tax regime that's available for, to domestic entrepreneurs uh, isn't as competitive as it might be, particularly when you compare it to our nearest neighbour. Um, in particular, the 10% rate of uh, capital gains tax entrepreneurs relief in the UK is very attractive. Um, you will now potentially have across the border in Northern Ireland a 12.5% rate of corporation tax combined with a 10% rate of capital gains tax. So a uh, 33% R rate of capital gains tax I think is pretty uncompetitive with that. But anyway, overall the message I'd leave you with is that I, I think Ireland has evolved and developed a, um, a tax regime for business that it's fair, it's transparent, it's competitive, um, and it's now, uh, according to our latest survey, the most attractive uh, in the world for investment. Thank you. Thanks, Mark.